Thank you all for tuning in. The following is a presentation of Bald Spots Productions. Be sure to like, comment, and share. You know, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you've got to do to kick that algorithm into gear and help us reach more people. Yes, it is I, your humble host, Bill Hatch the Third, coming to you live from the Palatial Home Studios of Bald Spots Productions here in the beautiful city of Malden, Missouri. Joining me from more than acceptable safe social distances are my guests for today. We have Sally Peterson. How are you doing, Sally? I'm doing great. Thank you. And Lisa Schirmerhorn. How are you doing, Lisa? Yeah, I'm awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you both for being on. Uh, it's uh, we, we had a, a little bit of technical difficulty, but uh, uh, but we're starting over. <laughs> <laughs> No exactly. oh, goodness. Well, that's that's the so, joy of um, technology, right? It's great, but it yes. does not always work perfectly. Right. <laughs> well, I, I've often said it's both the cause of and the solution to so many of life's little problems. <laughs> Definitely. But no uh, uh, oh, goodness. And uh, um, so uh, let's see. So usually when I start, actually every time now when I start, I always ask people the same question. And that is, who or what are you reading right now? And I know, uh, I know some people uh, listen to books now. Um, I, I, uh, I, I would like to be doing more of that. Um, but, uh, um, but unfortunately, textbooks don't come, uh, don't come in uh, audio format. Um, so, That's Lisa, right. let's start with you. Lisa, what, who, who are you reading right now? You know, I, I really thought about this question a lot and there's a book that I read actually over and over again and it's the four uh -huh. agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz and okay. it's something it's one of those books that you can pick up on any page and just get a paragraph and it'll just it, it's exactly what I need for the day <laughs> but they it's all about you know being a way to live your life uh, through the Toltec um philosophy of life so it's don't okay. take anything personally always be impeccable with your word don't make assumptions and always do your best and okay. you would think that that would be a difficult thing you know would be an easy thing but it's actually <laughs> quite difficult for a lot of people <laughs> so anyway that's that's kind of like my guidebook that i like to refer to often interesting interesting Indeed. Um, and, uh, and Sa well, what's, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, before I switch over to Sally, uh, what's, uh, what's been the key takeaway recently then for your most recent read? Um, always be impeccable with your word. It's the integrity okay. thing for me. And, mm -hmm. um, because when, when I'm around other people and I don't see an integrity in their words, um, it's a huge alarm for me. And that, that's, that's a big thing for me is always being in integrity with what I say, say what I mean and mean what I say. Okay. I'm writing that one down. That's uh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And Sally, how about you? What are you reading right now? I am reading Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, I'm actually okay. almost done. I should, well, I might be finishing it today. Uh, I, I spend some time reading. I, I donate plasma twice a week. And so while I'm there donating, oh. that's my time to read. So I, I make sure I get in okay. a good 45 minutes twice a week while I'm there. So it's it's nice because sometimes it's hard to, to find time to, to read. And I do listen to a number of audio books as well. So I can kind of multitask with that. But right. with that, I'm usually not paying quite as much attention to the book. So I do <laughs> love to have that paper book in my hands. Yeah, yeah. I, I do I do both. I, I get generally the books I need to read, I, I can't get on audio, but uh some of them I can get digitally. And uh um you know, but uh um but yeah, so uh um so what's the key takeaway for Atomic Habits? It really is doing little things and building on top of that. And so if we think of New Year's, everybody does all these New Year's resolutions and we're going to do a whole bunch of things at one time. And we're really kind of setting ourselves up for failure in situations like that. 
And so mm -hmm. what we what we really need to be doing is just small habits. And so when I do one thing, then I'm going to, and then that's that next little habit. So it could be, you know, leaving my book on my pillow in the evening. So when I go to bed, instead of having my phone in my hand, I then have the book because I need to move it off my pillow. So it's easy to open it up and just start by reading a couple of pages. Have the goal mm -hmm. of one or two pages. Most times we end up reading more than that. Um, but it's those little things that we do that then over time become bigger and bigger habits. Right, right. Yeah, there was a, I want to say it was a book titled The Slight Advantage that uh, um, that talked about the, uh, about little, uh, little changes throughout time. And, uh, um, and of course, everybody likes to say, if you change 1% a day, then at the end of the year, you'll have changed 365%. The, the math's a little different than that, but uh, <laughs> it, it's actually it's actually more than four hundred percent. But uh, um, when you when you add up the one percent of one percent and and all that, mm. but uh, <laughs> we'll we'll have to ask my sister. She's the mathematician of the family. I have to do it all out on paper. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, um, but yeah yeah making well, the, the improving, slight right? changes. Everything, everything we do to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah, and it doesn't take a lot. Um, or like uh, I, I always like the old saying, uh, the old uh, question: How do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And uh, and that's how you should be tackling uh, your your big uh, your big stuff. I'm I'm of course I, I flashed the book a little earlier. I'm reading the emotionally healthy leader um, for mm. uh, for a class I'm taking in uh, in grad school. Um, and uh, um, one thing I've taken away from it so far is that the things that keep hold us back are things that may not be in the recent past they they may go back to uh to family past and uh um and so they're having a, he's having his, the author's having me do a, a well the author has all the readers do a genogram and uh um and with little wavy lines and squiggles and stuff going back and forth to show what kind of relation what could, pardon me what kind of relationships the different people on the genogram had or have, depending on whether they're still with us or not. And uh, um, to uh, to be able to analyze where our various holdbacks, our shadows, as he puts it, um, have come from. And uh, um, now, now you're getting into my expertise. That's actually what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so... Yeah, and okay. I actually not only work with people in, in going back and releasing through the unconscious mind, because consciously we don't always have access to those memories, the programs. Um, in my book, In Every Belief is a Lie, is because our beliefs oftentimes come from our parents, our grandparents, our culture, our religion, all of those mm -hmm. things that aren't necessarily ours. And we can actually inherit belief systems. So we can inherit, I've gone back up to 10 generations with people Wow! Um, because it can happen through your DNA. So not only do we get these leadership skills and artistic and musical skills that come in through our DNA that we inherit, but we can also inherit a lot of dysfunction. Um, you can carry a belief around money that isn't even yours. Maybe your grandparents survived um, you know, the, the depression. And so they had the scarcity mindset that you inherit and you have no mm -hmm. reason for it. So it's really fascinating. Okay. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. It, it, it has been uh, pretty interesting so far and, and finding out I'm only going back, uh, to my grandparents' generation, um, of direct lineage, um, and, yeah. uh, and the siblings. Um, so, uh, um, so yeah, it's been interesting going back <clears throat> and learning more about my grandparents' relationship with my aunts, with my aunts on the one side or the uncles on the other, um, and uh, um, finding out how uh, how they got along and uh, and all of those uh, all of those things. It's not necessarily happy, uh, <laughs> but uh, no. um, 
but yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot more basic, I'm sure, than what you normally do um, with uh, with people. But uh, um, but it's it's definitely interesting. That kind of work is never basic. <laughs> you never say that. <laughs> well, no, it's a it lot. Of, it's a lot to break habits. It, it's a lot to break those mm -hmm. those patterns in your family. It takes a lot of courage to do that. Yeah. And, and families yeah. aren't easy or basic or always get along. Like, <laughs> exactly. That, that's in TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, only on TV can your problems be taken care of in a half an hour. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm having to do that for a uh, class on uh, leadership. Um, on uh, And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, well, I'm doing research uh, for my book series. I'm writing a book. You all have written books, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> Everybody's written a book. <laughs> Actually, let's talk about the books for uh, for for a minute um, here. Uh, Lisa, who uh, what what have you written? <laughs> what have you written lately? <laughs> so this is my book in every belief is a lie. And you see like okay. you know, fingers crossed are there. That's actually me. It's it's hard to see there. But if you look at the yeah. word belief, lie is in the middle of it. So of I course. take people through uh, my own journey of where I, I, you know, where my beliefs are, because I, I had a nervous breakdown 25 years ago where I was mm. suicidal, didn't want to be here anymore. And um, I was going from therapist to therapist and no one was helping me. And then someone suggested a hypnotist. And I was like, oh, don't they make you quack like a duck? I, I didn't understand <laughs> And um, she changed my life. And because of her, mm. I went on to study that and study the unconscious mind and travel all around the world because I wanted to be the person who I was searching for back then because there wasn't mm. anyone available that I knew could help me. So it's my process of my own stories um, and techniques that people can do themselves. There's questions at the end of the book. And it really delves into helping people discover where their beliefs came from and how to release and overcome uh, a lot of them that are getting in your way. And um, I also talk about how people discover their why and their purpose. So, yeah, it was the labor of love um, that took me five months, 15 years to take me five months to finally sit down. <laughs> the, what is it they say? The 20 year overnight success? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I myself, uh, um, uh, I struggle with, uh, with major depression and it took a while to find uh, the right therapist as well. And, yeah. uh, and it's oh so important to, uh, to find the right help. And uh, it comes in different forms for different people because everybody's different. So, so, uh, so glad you found the one that helped you. Exactly. But uh, um, yeah, so we have a we have a special place for uh, for mental health in our hearts here uh, here at the show, um, and uh, in, including uh, leaving a space for uh, for the nine eight nine eight eight hotline at the end of the uh, at the end of the closing credits, so uh, so people can uh, find that help if they need it. But uh, um, but yeah, um, yeah, Sally, how about you? What are you? Uh, what what have you written? <laughs> well, I've written, um, so it's in a, in a similar way, I've, I've co-authored a book, uh, Voices of the 21st Century, Empowering okay. Women Through Passion and Purpose. And so that's, you know, exactly what it is, Empowering Women. And it's, it's um, I think there's 45 or 46 of us who've all written wow. a chapter within the book. And so within there, there's always somebody to relate to or, or more than one person through their journey and what they overcame. And so that's been fabulous. And then I have a book that just came out last year as well, and it's called International Money Mastery, which is completely different. And it's about <laughs> diversifying globally and saving on taxes and protecting our assets and, and having a global lifestyle. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, of course, I see uh, you put down uh, by your name, Global Citizen Life. Which uh, which certainly sounds uh, sounds interesting. Um, what uh, uh, what exactly does that mean? 
So basically, it, it means becoming a global citizen. I mean, we're we're all people, and we shouldn't be just stuck to the constraints of where we were born or where we live. And so, with that, it's helping people reduce taxes by either starting a company or moving their company to a low or no tax jurisdiction, um, mm. protecting our assets from lawsuits and um, you know frivolous things, or sometimes just from the government. Um, and so we work hard for our things. We want to make sure that they're they're protected. And then for some, it's moving internationally, whether it's full time, part time, casually. Um, they can also, you know, have citizenships. Multiple citizenships are a great way to protect yourself as well, because a lot of people don't realize they think, oh, I have my passport. I'm entitled to it. And that's not the way it is. If you look at a lot of government things, your passport is something that is a privilege. And you don't mm -hmm. own it. If it's lost, it needs to be returned to the government. And so if there's right. reasons of who knows what, the government decides they don't want to renew your passport for whatever reason they deem necessary. Um, if you've been involved with potentially illegal activity or maybe even times of identity theft. And until that mm. gets resolved, you may not have a passport and therefore you can't travel or go anywhere and you are stuck within that country. So having a passport is great for those things and also just for travel you could be like me i'm from canada it's a great passport to have but it doesn't give me visa free travel everywhere in the world and so having another passport also can give me uh, more freedom to travel even more without having to apply for passports and or sorry to apply for visas and things like that in countries that as a canadian i would have to apply for right right now you spend a lot of time overseas. You were, I remember uh, you saying something about being in the Maldives and uh, and Spain. Uh, no, I I split my time generally between Spain and Montenegro in Europe. Montenegro. Okay, I knew it started with an yeah. M. Yeah. <laughs> what what made you choose? Beautiful. I don't know if I'd want to spend too much time there. I think I'd get pretty bored. Although it is beautiful. So what made you choose uh, uh, Montenegro and uh, and Spain? Um, well, for me, like what I love about Spain is I'm in Barcelona and it's busy and there's a lot going on and there's always stuff to do and there's so many restaurants. I mean, and I love it. But at the same point, after a while, I get tired of it. There's always mm -hmm. people. There's always stuff. And and I, I kind of, I, like, I love to get away. I love Montenegro because it's quiet. Uh, my place, I'm surrounded by mountains, 10 minutes from the sea, uh, and I love the water. And so for me, I can be in Barcelona for a while. And then once I start to get just tired of all the busyness, the go, 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 I can go to my place in Montenegro. I relax. I see my friends there. I enjoy quiet, enjoy hiking in the mountains and everything. And then when I start to get bored, then I just head back to <laughs> Spain, see my friends again. And I, I do travel quite a bit in between those times as well. So for me, it's perfect. I love having that. And ultimately, I would like to have four places, four different countries, one in each, and, and live a lifestyle that way. And I know that's not for everybody. Some people just want sure. one, maybe two places. And, and so it's figuring out what, what is your ideal life? What works for you and what can we do to help you get that? Because we're never stuck. I always say to people, the only place where you're stuck is in your head. Uh, I'm a military brat. So, uh, so I grew oh. up all over, a little bit all over the place. And uh, um, yeah, I was, I was kind of used to every few years moving from place to place. I've been to, uh, been to different places in the, uh, in the Orient and uh, um you know, and uh, but I've never been I've never been east of the east coast of the United States. So uh, mm. um, so I, I have yet to be to Europe. But uh, um, one of these days I'll uh, I'll get out there. How about you, Lisa? If my dream is to try actually Sal Sally and I had a fascinating conversation when <laughs> you couldn't get on. I was really actually grateful <laughs> for the time that I got with her because I learned so much um, because I remember when I was younger. Um, I met this couple who said that their parents, instead of retiring in one place, they chose a new country, a new city in the world and would go for three or four months at a time, just long enough wow. to get to know the place, but not long enough to want to stay. And then they travel and say, maybe they'd find a place that they'd want to go. 
Um, so after my divorce eight years ago, I, I, my, I married someone who hated to travel. I was married to someone for 29 <laughs> years. So I went, I, I, it was like a Jack in the box. Like I literally exploded. And I went to all of these places as soon as we, <laughs> we separated. And, um, the idea is really intriguing to me about the idea of, of what Sally is doing. Um, it's scary. I've moved a lot. But um, enough, I know how to make new friends and I'm very resourceful. But the idea of having to learn a new language, getting, you know, all of those things in order, you know, the detail stuff is a little nerve wracking, but at the same time is really exciting. And so I love what Sally offers. Um, I think it's an incredible thing. I'd never heard that there was, that was a thing that someone did what she did. So I'm, I'm, I'm potentially a great candidate for her <laughs> nothing wrong with that nothing wrong indeed no it's it i think the greatest learning that you can do in your life i love books but travel because you see yeah. history come alive and as someone who's an american we are so isolated and like i live right near the canadian border in vermont and I don't know anyone who ever talks about going to Canada. And it always blows my mind. I go to Montreal all the time. It's I can go for the day. I go two and a half hours. I, I leave at eight o'clock in the morning, go have lunch, walk around, have dinner with friends, and then drive back. And I'm in, you know, speaking French and I'm exploring new things. And I, I am always amazed at how few people have that in them that want to explore like that. Yeah. And that, that really is more of a North American thing, because when you're in Europe, the Europeans travel all the time. Right. Long weekends and things. Now, granted, it is easier to travel because the countries are smaller and it's substantially cheaper when you're in Europe to travel mm -hmm. to all the different mm -hmm. countries. But for them, travel is, I mean, it's, it's a part of life and they would go just a long weekend, three days, hop on a flight or a train go to another city or country and, and spend the time there and then come back home. Interesting. Yeah. My, uh, um, my cousin, I, uh, I bought a house with, uh, he, uh, he's a, a homebody. Um, right now I'm kind of experimenting, learning what it means to be a homebody. We, we have a, a little property and, uh, um, and I bought stuff to plant a garden. We planted, uh, we planted apple trees and, and I got some chickens and uh, so all of those uh, got to stay at home things, but uh, um, but yeah, I've got the uh, I've got the itchy feet. Um, you know, I want to see what's <laughs> over the next hill, and uh, um, <laughs> but I well, guess that's probably know, just people... why. I... Go ahead. Go ahead, Bill. No, I was just going to say it's probably just gonna... a lot of how it was when I grew up. But also, too, for people who feel a little bit like they're stuck. You know, you, you, you have the house, you have the plants, you have the pets, you have chickens or cats or dogs or things like that. There's also a thing called house and pet sitting. And I'm actually doing that right now at this moment where I'm staying in a family's home. They have a dog and two cats. So I'm taking care of them for a month while they're on vacation in Europe. And I have nice. traveled to many cities, many countries, doing that and so th there's two ways to do it you could either for the listeners too they could do it as a way to travel and and you're not paying for a hotel which becomes very expensive but also for people who want to travel but they don't want to put their their pets in into um, like a boarding place or they're worried they don't want to bother their friends or family members to take care of their pets that mm -hmm. there are many there's websites and services out there that people will come and, and they love it because it's their chance to see a city perhaps that they haven't been to before. And they love pets. I've been with pets all my life and I don't, I can't have them now because I travel too much, but I still mm -hmm. get to enjoy them because <laughs> I go and I take care of them and I have that time. And sometimes it's just for a week. There's a, sometimes occasionally it'll be a few days and, and not as much for a month long. Those ones aren't as often. But it's a great way not only for people to travel to get to places, but also for people who have pets and, and that family life and home and responsibilities and things, but they can still get away and their home's being taken care of and their pets are being taken care of. You know, it's interesting you talk about that because one of my close friends who's a Montrealer got tired of the overhead 
of her home. She'd owned it for years, but the expense of everything and maintaining her home, uh, she had a brownstone and she's like, I'm done. And she literally sold everything, like everything. Wow. I made her keep, I kept two of her things because I was like, you can't get rid of these. <laughs> I'm going to just hold them for, for you. So, and she does that. She just uh, sits. She, 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 she does the animal sitting and she's all over the place. She never knows. She had a three month gig for the winter because these people were traveling, but she, I, she has two suitcases, one where her winter clothes and one for her summer clothes. And, um, she's like, I've never felt so free. She has no overhead. So anything she makes, she just puts in the bank. And, um, wow. there's a freedom there that she said has just been extraordinary. I bet. Cause she was I working bet. like insane 15 hours a day, 12, 15. It was crazy to maintain everything. So yeah, there's something really good to be, you know, nice to be say, said about that, Sally. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I get the chance to kind of travel remotely um, through the uh, through the podcast. Um, I've had guests from Finland and Israel and uh, um, South America and um, just all over the place. Quite a few from Canada and. Uh, um, and it's uh, it's interesting to get to meet people that way, but uh, it's not quite the same as going somewhere. No, it, it it never is. Being somewhere, it's 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 just a different experience because it's the energy, um, the the smells, the feel. Because some people say mm -hmm. to me, like, I hate winter and and cold, and and part of the reason why I left. And I've talked to people from other countries, and they say, but what is what is minus forty degrees Celsius feel like? And I said, you don't want to experience it. It's cold. It. It's so cold. But, and the opposite. I've been to places where it's plus 40 and it's really hot. So, you know, there's there's things about travel that we can read in a book. We can try to imagine. We can try to picture or we can look at a picture. But even still, sometimes even looking at a picture, the size of something, a, a building, the architecture, the detail, we don't quite see it or understand it until you're standing right in front of it. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's reading about something isn't quite the same as touching it. Um, when uh, um, when I was in high school, we traveled around quite a bit and uh, um, got to see uh, and touch and be at these historical uh, places around the United States. And uh, and that's way different than uh, than reading in a history book about oh yes so and so did this and oops careful don't don't drop us that was, that was the dog <laughs> my computer plugged in and almost took the computer and cord with uh -oh. him <laughs> wow yeah. that's that's good you know, the pros and cons of pet sitting sometimes when you're not used to them or they're not used to the cords um, setups yeah. are a little bit different so. <laughs> That's awesome. But, uh, but, you know, it's interesting because I was involved with a virtual reality company for a while. Um, mm -hmm. And you put these VR headsets on and you could travel around the world with it. And it was an incredible experience of feeling like you're actually there. But you can't taste the food. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yep, and that's yep. where you're like, hmm. For sure. And there's some good food out there, as I uh, as I can attest. Yes, to. there is. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, there I'm, is. I'm sorry. I love Italian food, but it's never better than anywhere than it is in Italy. It's true. <laughs> it's totally best pizza I've ever had in my entire gluten free pizza I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> in Italy. And gluten free pasta. I couldn't believe the everything. I'm like, your water's different here. <laughs> Everything's different. Yeah. <laughs> but um for sure yeah. but mindset you know you get back to that mindset is so important when you're, you're traveling mm -hmm. because you know i think about um some people who love to travel you have to be able to have that flexibility right mm -hmm. so people who love to travel have to be okay with flights getting canceled and delayed and missing your connections and 
you know, all of a sudden the place that you saw on Airbnb looks nothing like what you thought it was going to look like. Or the hotel pictures were 30 years old and you get there and the, mm -hmm. you know, they haven't updated anything. And, and that's something that I think is really important for people to understand is that when you want, if you want that kind of lifestyle, you have to have the really the right mindset around it too. Because if yeah. you're inflexible and can't handle change, then you're going to torture yourself. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I travel quite a bit and there's many people and a friend of mine, we have an ongoing joke about it. We're like, oh, our lives are so glamorous because you're traveling. <laughs> and there, and it's, you know what, absolutely. There's parts of it that's fantastic. But there's a lot of, of times, as you said, with flights being delayed and you know, or, or you're up at three o'clock in the morning and then you're waiting through security and then you have connections. So you basically have to undress three times and redress every time because you got to take your shoes off, your belt off, your laptop out. So you're packing, repacking. And, and when you only do it occasionally, it's no big deal. But when you start to do it a lot, it does become a little bit exhausting and it, and it does lose some of its fun and kind of glamour part to it. And, and it is quite different if you're just traveling for vacation and you go a couple times a year, or if you're traveling on a regular basis and moving around a lot and packing mm -hmm. and unpacking and everything, it's, it's not as, as much of a glamorous lifestyle as people assume it to be. And of course, with social media, a lot of times we just see the good things, right? We don't, yeah. we don't feel or experience that exhaustion, that sitting on a, a, a 12 hour, 14 hour flight to then have to get on another flight. And um, it's, you do have to have the right, the right mindset for it, for sure. And, and just be prepared. You have to be flexible, really, just to kind of, I always say mm -hmm. you gotta go with the flow. I'm, I'm supposed to arrive at this time. If all thing works out, I will get there. But there's times where I haven't shown up to the next day. Because especially over the long haul flights from, from going from Canada to Europe or places with weather and, and delays that there's cancellations. And I, I remember it was a couple of years ago, I was leaving Canada and the day I was leaving, it was minus 44 degrees Celsius and storms across Canada. I was at the airport at 7 a.m. and my flight was delayed, delayed, delayed. Um, they put me on a different flight, so it wasn't ended up, it didn't even end up being the same route. And I think I left at 11 p.m., so it's been all day at the airport. Um, and then, yeah, it was on a totally different route. So I had three three planes to catch with a different route, um, got back home much later than planned. Um, I think I ended up even staying within there a night Um overnight somewhere i mean it was it it, it was a bit of a nightmare it, it wasn't yeah. always it's not always great yeah i uh years ago was uh traveling space available on uh, military air transports um because uh, my father was uh was in the uh um no wait a minute was that army yeah i think that was during his time in the army and uh um I ended up uh, sleeping on a uh, on a park bench outside the airport because it closed at night, <laughs> and uh, oh, and they didn't have a space available for me on a on a flight. So, um, but thankfully it was uh, it was in Okinawa, Japan, and so it was kind of warm out. So uh, um, so no no negative forty degrees uh, weather. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, uh, but it was it was funny. This was, of course was way before uh, uh, way before a lot of the TS before any of the TSA stuff. But uh, um, I remember uh, um, when I went into Japan, um, they drove us off the off the uh, off the military base and off to uh, a uh, um, a uh, a check station that they had uh, just off the base and. Uh, um, and the uh, um, the uh, the Japanese inspector took my bag, and in every uh, um, in every compartment that I had in this one bag, he would ask me if that was where I kept my drugs. <laughs> <laughs> He'd open up a bag. Is this where you keep your drugs? And I'm like, I don't have any drugs. And then he found a big bag of uh, peanut M and M's, and he had no idea what they were. He's like, What are these? Are these drugs? 
<laughs> like, no, they're candy. <laughs> I was, I was um, leaving Egypt and I was, when I was in Egypt, I was trying so hard to find something for my son because everything in the markets are jewelry and silver mm -hmm. and all these kind of really cool things. But for, you know, for my son, 20 something, I couldn't find. And then I found this knife and it was like an old, like Hodge knife. It was curved and it had a sheath on it and it was all embossed and it was really cool. So I asked the tour guide, can I bring this back? And they said, as long as it's in your checked luggage, it's fine. So I bought it and I put it in my luggage. And in order to go in the airport, they X, they X-ray you everywhere you go be, just for wow. security in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So going in, it showed up. So they pull mine out in, in, in the entryway where everyone is and my tour group too. And the police officer, the security guard opens up my bag and then he's poking around with the butt of his rifle and he lifts his rifle <laughs> up and there's hanging a pair of my underpants hanging from the butt of his rifle oh, and no. he doesn't know it. So he's looking the other way and he's talking and my underpants are hanging from his rifle. Oh no. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 excuse me. And he looked over and I'm like, can I get those? Yes. <laughs> so they put my bag oh. on double secret probation and taped it up and said it might be, you know, uh, might have some issues at JFK airport, which it didn't. They were fine with it. And, and I got it home <laughs> to my son. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't had anything quite that embarrassing happen. Wow. That's a great story to tell, though. It's, yeah, it is. It's very embarrassing at <laughs> the time, I'm sure. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, that's what you, you know, Travel isn't always glamorous. Nope. <laughs> exactly. And I survived. But you know what? That's, that's the story of life when I think about resilience. You know, mm -hmm. it's like the happiest people are really resilient and they go with the flow. And I was just with a client this morning who was like very rigid and very about control and worried about what other people think. And I thought mm -hmm. she can't find happiness because happiness is always outside of her looking for what other people think. And um, I just thought what a tragic way to go through life because, you know, stuff happens in everything. I mean, I'm Greece, we were trying to get to Mykonos and we had to go through the Athens airport. And what do you know, they take a lunch break where they shut down and leave like 50 planes standing there waiting to have their step passport stamped just to get in. And so wow. if your flight is leaving, there's no one there. Like they literally just took a lunch break. So we missed our connecting flight because they took an hour lunch break and left us standing there. You have to be able to do that in life. You have to just shrug it off, laugh, and just deal with things. Um, because if you let all that stuff get to you, um, it just sucks the joy. I just laugh at all of this stuff now as much as I can. I mean, there are, are there times where it's really trying and I'm struggling in life? Yes, of course. And you have to deal with it. But I just love the idea of just laughing and just, you know, oh, wow, look at that. Look what just happened. <laughs> now we have no place to, now we're going to have to stay in a hotel tonight in Athens. And then you look at it as an opportunity. So now I can go and spend some time and do something else. I don't know something that it wasn't normally planned. Yeah. Well, you, you never know what's going to happen. Life is what happens when you, uh, when you don't have a plan. Yeah. You know? exactly. or, um, or when you do, sometimes when you do have a plan, I was saying like, mm -hmm. when you make a plan, you know, life, life happens. It, it gets in the way. Yeah. I like to try to say it's more of a guideline. These are the things yes. that I would like to do the, the path that I would like to take knowing that, life is going to happen and, and we have to roll with those punches and it happens to everybody. We all have stuff that we have to deal with and go through at different times. And, and some of it's worse than others, but as, as the saying goes, this too shall pass, but that's for the good times too, right? We get through those tough times and then we're having a great time. And then all of a sudden, sometimes out of nowhere, we get hit with something and it, 
you know, knocks us down or takes the wind away or whatever it may be. And again, it's like, okay, got to go through this. And then we get to good times again. And then eventually it'll happen again. So. Yep. Yeah, you need to be open to uh, to those things because sometimes some of those things that happen end up being great. You know, it's a, a, a nice little detour that you weren't expecting something wonderful to happen or to meet somebody nice and and uh, and all sorts of things like that. Um, you know, uh, kind of uh, kind of like. Uh, you... Oh, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say it's kind of like the uh, it's kind of like the uh, it's OK. It's kind of like the show. Um, you know, when I uh, when I first got involved in radio, I wasn't thinking this, and uh, and I've met some wonderful people uh, doing this, and uh, um, you know, it's uh, it's been great. It's. I was gonna say it's like if you've seen that movie. I think it was called Sliding Doors, and I think it was one of the Paltrow that was in it, and it it. At the kind of the beginning of the movie, it was when she was going to take the metro, the train, and in one scene, she gets on the train and makes it home and discovers her husband was having an affair and how her life went. But the other was she missed that train. And then mm -hmm. I think she got mugged or something, ended up in the hospital just briefly, didn't find out about and how her life was two separate ways determining mm. by if she made that that train and so and I think sometimes too when I um, literally miss a train sometimes if I'm in Europe and I miss the train and I know there's another one coming or I'm trying to get somewhere and I'm hitting every single red light if I'm driving okay. or something mm -hmm. I just think I'm not supposed to be there yet or I'm not supposed I, to and, yes. and I, I just kind of think not for sure that there's a reason it's like I'm not supposed to be there yet or or the phone rings just as I'm walking out the door and you make that decision if you answer or don't answer. And that could be a changing or slightly changing aspect of kind of the rest of your life. I believe I am exactly where I'm at because of every decision I made. And even the slightest little decision could change. And I, I know people, they say, well, I'm, I'm afraid to do something or they do something. They're like, oh, I wish I, I wouldn't have taken this job. I should have taken that job. I said, but you wouldn't then be happier in that other place because maybe that job would have ended. Maybe you would have gotten to a car accident going to work one day and you're not even here. Like we can't predict if we would have made or wouldn't. And it just is what it is from every decision and thing that's kind of happened. Yeah. I'm a well, firm believer in that. And I, I um, write about many synchronicities that have happened in my life where things just kind of aligned. And the biggest part of that was letting go of control and following. And sometimes I end up places where I don't even know why I'm supposed to be there, but then I find out later. And, um, you know, the same thing. If I keep hitting a bunch of stoplights and I'm getting delayed over and over again, I'd like to think about what is God doing for me instead of to me? Because what if there was an accident ahead that I might have ended up in? Or what if all of these different things? So I, it, the, the attitude of I'm always exactly where I'm supposed to be at this time is a great way. And it helps you. That's why I look at people with road rage and anger and sitting in, you know, dealing with traffic. I'm like, Hey, you know what? There's a lot worse situations you can be in than just sitting in traffic. <laughs> That's right. you know? Yeah. Well, you know, it goes back to, uh, to where we started uh, with this conversation of, uh, of the slight, the slight advantage, the slight change, that 1% uh, change, you know, it's like, even though it may seem like a small thing, like they were out of French fries, so you had to get a salad or whatever, uh, whatever little thing, and it sends you off on a different path that may only be slightly different at times, but eventually it could be this huge difference between where you would have ended up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. Um, I I was in a 29-year marriage. Mm -hmm. I stayed 10 years longer than I probably should have. But I had my reasons for staying. I wanted my children. I wanted to stay there until my children left. And um, we tried very hard to make things work. And I think about 
that one decision to leave and what brought me to that because I was terrified to be alone. alone. One of my greatest fears was being alone. And I was studying with a woman who had just uh, started a course on firewalking. And this was about um, teaching people how to facilitate firewalking. And I hate firewalking. Like I've done it before, but it was not something that I really wanted to do. But I knew that I needed to do something and scare myself so much that leaving wasn't going to be a problem anymore. So I decided to take this week-long course. And the, the week in, involved um, bending rebar, 10-foot piece of rebar from my throat, uh, breaking arrows from the soft part of my throat, walking uh, four feet on broken glass of wine bottles, and uh, seven to 10 feet of red hot coals every night. And to graduate, we had to walk 40 feet of red hot coals. Wow. And so the whole week, I couldn't even focus on the wins that I had each day of doing all those other things. Because all I could think of is how I was going to end up in the hospital and have my feet amputated, or I was going to die. Because how could someone possibly get through 40 feet of red hot coals without burning? the heck out of their feet. Mm -hmm. So I went into this like depression and victim and whining through the whole thing. And then I got to the, the moment where I had to walk. And one of the people in the class looked at me and they go, how much fire have you walked this week? And I was like, well, we walked seven to 10, you know, feet a night. And he's like, well, we've been here five nights. You've probably walked at least over 40, 40 feet or more. And I was like, yeah, he said, so you've already done this. This should be a piece of cake for you. Now go. And just with the switch in my brain that I went, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake. I walked and it was my easiest walk. Hmm. And I got in the car and I got home and I had the courage to have that conversation with my now ex-husband. Wow. But it was like, I had to do something to scare myself. I had to do something to put myself completely out of my comfort zone. And I think, you know, Sally, that's kind of what you do with people is helping them get out of their comfort zone, getting them to a place that, you know, if I could just get out of that fear and, and you hold people's hands to do something that they've never done before. And then I always find it's the fear of the fear. It's not once you get, because once you get there, it's like, oh my God, I wish I had done this 10 years ago. Right? right. So how much of what you do is really psychology of holding people's hands and, and, you know, letting them know that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. A, a lot of it is it's, you know, our, our brain is there. Like the human, we're more advanced than our brain is like, we're smart, but I, I mean that because our brain, if we go back a couple hundred years, our brain is to protect us, right? It protect us from dying, to protect us from getting hurt, to protect us from all of these things. And unfortunately, that's where our brain still is today, which I mean, to a certain degree, we need it. We, we need to right. do smarter things and we need to protect ourselves and keep ourselves safe. But it also hinders us in so many ways because there are many things to do. And it always goes to like the moving abroad, let's say, and so what if you know, what if it's a bad area? What if I get hurt? What if it doesn't work out? What if I hate it? Instead of saying, what if I meet amazing people? What if I get a new hobby that I didn't even know that I liked and I enjoy? What if I get healthier? What if all of a sudden I'm walking more and I eat better? What if I love life way more? And that's usually what happens. People end up enjoying it a lot more. And then they, as you said, Lisa, most times I hear often, I wished I would have done this sooner. And, and I so admire you because you do this as a single woman, right? Yes. And, and so there's this fear of, you know, is it dangerous? And in our conversation, you talked about that, that you were like, no, it's actually not dangerous at all that you don't even recall ever having, it. you know, as long you have to be smart, you have to be aware, right? Right. I mean, there's just like places, there's dangerous places in the U.S., there's dangerous places in Canada or, and I use the word dangerous, but it's, it's, it could be a place that you're just not comfortable with, or maybe you right. shouldn't be in at night or by yourself. And that's everywhere in the world, but every country right. and, and cities and places too have wonderful, great places and amazing people and good things as well. And 
you know, we have to have some of that common sense. Be aware of your surroundings, yeah. where you're going, what are you doing? Because we can always put ourselves into an unsafe situation and we can always keep ourselves in safe situations as well. Yeah. But growth happens where you're uncomfortable. You know, mm -hmm. so you have to get out That's of your comfort right. zone and uh, to uh, to grow, to become more than what you are now. And uh, yeah, so yeah. need to do more of uh, exactly. need to do some more risk taking. <laughs> no, it is. It is. And I think about, you know, when you think about that movie sliding doors, the difference of what I've done in my life by making that decision to leave versus the fear of staying. And, and he's a very good man. I had a wonderful time. I, we, we had an incredible life and raised two children together. I'm so grateful. I never want to disparage him, but it just, we grew apart and there was a part of me that was dying that needed something. And I was terrified to have that courage to go. But when you get over that fear and you take that on, there's so much adventure, so much to learn. We live on a globe that is so magnificent. We have so many beautiful places in the world and language and food and music. You know, just go to New Orleans and spend a couple days between the art, the music, the food and everything. Just being surrounded by, you know, all of that is is incredible. And uh yeah, I, I hope more and more people at least getting out of this conversation see the value in getting out of your comfort zone and traveling and really pushing yourself um, mm -hmm. to be, you know, just out of that little comfort zone and, and just it can start give it a with shot. Almost as going very back to the beginning of our conversation with me reading the book, Atomic Habits, and it's little steps. So yep. if you haven't traveled, leave your city. If you have, if you've done that, leave the state or the province that you're in. If you're done that, maybe leave and go a little bit further. Or for some people, which I know is very, very scary, go have dinner at a restaurant by yourself. <laughs> I, I remember one time I was out and I was, I was in Ireland and I was at a pub. I can't remember the name of it. Really popular pub, though. And I'm listening to the music and there's lots of different live music um, things going on in various rooms. And I'm just standing by the wall listening. And this girl comes up to me. And she's, Are you here alone? And I said, yeah, I am. She said, oh, my gosh, I would never do that. And I said. Well, then you're missing out on a lot of things because, you know, yes, people are talking, but a lot of people are just listening to music. I don't have to talk to somebody to listen to music. And look, I'm having a conversation with you. So now we're talking. So I'm talking to someone and, and you get to know people that way. I've had so many amazing experiences because I've met people because I've traveled by myself or just talking to a bartender. Sometimes when I go out for dinner and I'm by myself, I'll sit at the table by myself and maybe have a book with me or a phone and catch up or have emails and or, or chat uh, with a friend or something. And other times I sit at the bar and I talk to the bartender and I get to know about the city that I'm in or places he likes to go or she likes to go to and, and things to do. Um, and then I meet other people sometimes too. One time when I was in Bath, England, I met a girl who was from Canada and has been living there for, I think at that time it was about 10 or 12 years. And she brought me around that night to all these really cool places that I never would have found by myself. And probably, I, I don't know, I may, if I knew about them, maybe I would have gone by myself. But because I didn't know, and it was just because I was sitting at the bar, having a drink, talking to the bartender, and she was two seats down and we started chatting and I had a fabulous time. No. Yeah. Yeah, years ago when uh, when I was still married, I only made it to uh, five and a half years. But uh, during those five and a half years, uh, <laughs> yeah, twenty nine just seems uh, seems unattain unobtainable to me uh, from my point of reference. But um, we uh, we went over to the Philippines, and my ex wife's family took us around the uh, the islands, and uh, um, you know, and and we went to places that if I'd have gone there on my own and not known anybody there though, you know, I never would have, uh, I never would have gone to like, uh, had this great dinner at a restaurant that only had three walls at the current time. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, um, and didn't look like the kind of place where you'd want to go to eat, but they knew the place. And so it was like, okay, so you need to, so 
go go there by yourself, but you need to meet somebody who knows uh, who knows things, because because uh, you know you're you're gonna go places you wouldn't have gone, you wouldn't have known to gone to go, wouldn't have known to have gone. And that's just exactly. talking to people. Talk to <laughs> yeah. people. It's it's easy. Mm-hmm. Hi, how are you? How's your day? Oh, what you know? They're they're eating something or drinking something. You're like, oh, excuse me, what what is that? And yeah. then that's how you strike up conversations or you're waiting in line to get into a museum or something like that. Um, you mm-hmm. know, you, there, there's so many ways that you can easily just start a conversation and find out where they're from. And if they're local or something, where mm-hmm. to go, or if they're not, where have you been? What did you, what did you like? Yeah. Yeah. And the other, the other direction goes true as well. Um, the other, uh, the other a couple of weeks ago, we had the, uh, um, had the, the eclipse, here and uh, um, you know we had totality here and tons of people from all over the place uh, were uh, um, had had come around and my parents going to a one of their regular haunts uh, for breakfast um, met these two girls who had come out from I think it was Oregon and they struck up a conversation with them and uh, um, you know and so uh, so these two girls ended up twenty uh, um, somethings I think. But uh, they ended up coming to uh, coming to my parents' house to watch the eclipse. It was uh, it was <laughs> interesting so in the opposite direction. There's so many great people. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's it's unfortunate that um, people think that it's a scary world out there and it's so mm-hmm. bad and, and you have to be so careful. I mean, it, it, you do have to be careful. You need to have a, a, some yeah. common sense and, and be aware. But there's so many wonderful, good people in the mm-hmm. world that are willing to help out and love to meet people and talk to them, especially yeah. when they're from a different city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so much of, of the the people who are not so great just happen to be really loud. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and they tend to, uh, they tend to outshout the, uh, the good people in the world, even though they out, even though we outnumber them, they, uh, mm-hmm. so, uh, um, so yeah, you need to, you need to get out there and, uh, and, and reach someone. Each one, reach one. <laughs> Remember that saying from something, but, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So, uh, Lisa, I wanted to I wanted to ask you. You're going to be in a in a in a movie, right? It's coming out in the fall. Yes. Yes. So, so exciting. Um, I got yeah. I got involved with a group. Um, I read the book Zero Limits by Dr. Joe Vitale a number okay. of years ago, and I had some friends who were involved in something called the Ho'oponopono Group, which is an ancient Hawaiian prayer forgiveness. And I was part of this group and we would meet every week and we would talk about our experiences and people were basically talking about miracles that were happening just Mm. from the act of forgiveness. And I integrate that in my work with my clients. It's about clearing and forgiving because, Mm -hmm. and really forgiving because people are like, oh, I I forgave them. And you're like, no, you didn't. (laughs) You need to be (laughs) neutral about those people. Mm -hmm. So, um, I got a, a, a con- I got contacted asking if I wanted to uh, be in the, the movie and uh, I, I applied I had to apply and I applied and I did and uh, they came to my home in Vermont and spent a day shooting and um, it was an extraordinary experience. It's gonna be three minutes <laughs> of my life. <laughs> But um, yeah, it was like eight hours of shooting and uh, it was exciting. So they're wrapping up and doc, doc, if you see Dr. Joe, Joe Vitale on social media, he's still talks about the filming of, you know, and who's in it. And then um, it goes to the film festivals for the next several months. And uh, my understanding, it's going to be released in the fall. So wow. I'm excited. Okay, cool. And that's zero exciting. limits. Yes. Okay. Yes, Dr. Yeah, Joe Vitale. Um, he was in the movie The Secret, if you're familiar with the yes. movie The Secret. Yes, I am familiar with that movie. Um, no, it's uh, it's interesting because um, forgiveness is one of the parts of the book series that I'm writing. 
on uh, on leadership. And it actually, I, I'm relating it to resilience, which we've also spoken about uh, today. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah, it's it's interesting how all of that uh, can tie together. And you know, uh, forgiveness is not about the other person. And most people think it is. You know, they get that that wrong impression of that. Oh, yeah, I'm forgiving them so they can have a better. No, it's not for them to have a better life. They don't care anymore. You know, it's for you, so you can have a better life because they're taking up valuable right. real estate in that brain of yours. And uh, um, yeah, exactly. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yep. So I always say, if you have seventy percent of your thoughts focused on retribution, angry, resentment. Mm -hmm. um, and then what's left for you to focus on what you want in your life, because what you focus on is what you attract. So what happens right. if you don't forgive, you start attracting more anger, more resentment, more of all of those things. And it blocks you from having joy that you want. So it's not that what the other person did was OK. It's that I'm not going to carry you anymore. I'm going to let right. you go. And I'm a firm believer in, you know. The world, the world. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. If there's retro, you know, I, I don't believe it's my job to create retribution on someone else. Right. Um, that will happen in, in consequences and karma. Um, I just want to focus on my life and having joy and not carrying other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You need to, yeah, you forgive uh, and break free. You know, it's, it's kind of like, would you give this person one of the rooms in your house? Would you let them live with you in your house? And if the answer is no, then the question is, why are you letting them live it take up a room in an even smaller piece of real estate? You know, it's, yeah, you, you need to, uh, rent you need free. to get them out. <laughs> rent free. Yes. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, for sure. And uh, um, yeah, that uh, that builds a, a better life for people because without it, w without that forgiveness, then you become one of these not so great people that uh, that we were just talking about out there in the world, who's angry and bitter, and uh, that you don't want to and loud, and that you don't want to meet because they're not going to help you uh, find uh, that great place to eat that you never would have tried, you know, without them. So, so yeah. So break free. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, how did you, how did you, did you say already how you found out about, uh, about this oppor the opportunity to be in the movie or I know you said you it applied. It was through the whole, yeah, it was through the whole Pono Pono group. Someone oh, had contacted Pono Pono and okay. said, we're looking, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, That's okay. they were looking for people to, to be in it who, who lived it, who, who were working okay. with it and, um, had that understood that mindset yeah that's amazing that's amazing um yeah yeah um but uh um but yeah um yeah forgiveness uh yeah leads to miracles it really does so uh so that's awesome well um we've uh we've been going at this for about an hour and uh usually that's when uh when things start to wind down people start to uh start to have more quiet time than, uh, than not. And, uh, that, and while that may be great for personal growth, that's not great for, uh, for podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll ask you both, uh, you fine ladies, uh, if you have any final words for the nice people, yeah. Any last words to go say? Ahead, either, either one of you. <laughs> okay. All right, I can go ahead. Um, I just, I, you looked like you were going to say something and I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I, I would just have to say, um, if anyone needs help figuring out their why and their purpose, if they're looking to um, get out of their own way and they have some belief systems that are blocking them, I'd love to talk with them. It's no obligation, but I love having conversations with people. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things we didn't get into is that I help people discover their why. So it's a it's a 10 minute um, assessment that people take and it's based on the Simon Sinek's no, you know, start with why and they learn their why, their how and their what, which helps them figure out their purpose. And it's mm. something I'm really passionate about. And so if anyone wants to know more, you can 
uh, get me on my website, lisamindset.com uh, or lisashermahorncoaching.com. It goes to the same place. It's just Shermahorn's a nightmare to spell. Yeah. My, uh, my ex-wife had, so uh, had for... a long last name, too. She said that was part of why she married me because my ha- name was so short. <laughs> have it shorter that's great um similar for me if people are you know interested in moving abroad global diversification reducing taxes asset protection my website is globalcitizenlife.org o-r-g um and we just help people to what we say to help them to live their best life and that is very different for each person And I have a a saying that I'm really kind of living by a a lot right now is we all will die. The question is, will you really live? That's a good question for anybody to ask. And uh, just so, uh, yeah, everybody, the, um, if you look back at the description, uh, you'll see that the links to Sally's and Lisa's websites are there so you can uh, find them easily and, uh, and interact with them uh, on your own time. And uh, um, I hope uh, I hope we've given everyone a, a glimpse into the minds of, uh, of my wonderful guests. And uh, um, so uh, everybody, uh, be safe out there. Uh, wash your hands and stay tuned for the ending credits. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been a presentation of Bald Spots Productions. I'd like to thank our producer, my beloved mother, Eileen Hatch. I'd especially like to thank our associate producer, Paul Hernandez III, for his contribution to the shows this month. Follow his financial channel, HDZ Financial, on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram to stay on top of the latest financial news and improve your financial literacy. I, of course, am your humble host. I'd also like to thank my special guests, Sally Peterson and Lisa Shermerhorn. Support the show if you feel so led over on Patreon.com. We're known as Bald Spots Pro. Don't you dare miss YWL Online. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever fine podcasts are offered. Be sure to tune in next time when my special guest will be Chinara Crumpton, a best-selling author on parenting and founder of Blue Parenting, who is concerned about the effect of the digital world on children, and Amanda Quick, the best-selling author of The Sex Trafficker's Wife, a TEDx speaker and trauma advocate who uses the power of stories to change the world. Be sure to like, comment, and share. You know, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you've got to do to kick that algorithm into gear and help us reach more people. If you or someone you know needs support now, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. That is the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline here in the United States. 